Welcome to Rugged Outdoors Guide. My name is Pete and you've come across my little channel here. Thanks for joining me. Hey, today we're going to be doing a DIY project. Now here I am in my shed where I do most of my DIY projects. It's a little bit chilly, that's why I got my toque on today. It's pouring like crazy outside. Uh, and uh, so it's just nice to be in a nice enclosed space to work today. We're going to be doing a DIY project, making your own fire starter. Now I'm going to explain a bit about that. I'm not just going to do a fire starter. You can find other videos on YouTube, YouTube about that. I'm going to do three different kinds of fire starters. I'm going to make two of my own, show you how I do that, and do some comparisons. But if you stick with me to the end of this video, I'm going to reveal to you an aha moment. So you want to stick around for that. Uh, it'll be very helpful in this whole topic of DIY projects. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is make two different, well, the first thing, the only thing we're going to do is make two different types of fire starters DIY. One of them is going to be from strips of newspaper like this. It's about two feet long, a couple inches wide, right? Just regular old newsprint. Another one's going to be this um, cotton pads kind of thing, you know, makeup remover style cotton pads, right? And uh, so let's get started right now. All right, so the first thing we got to do is create something of a double boiler because that's the scenario we want for melting wax. And yes, wax is going to be paraffin wax, not beeswax. Uh, just cheap old paraffin wax is going to be the basis for what we're making today. So I've got myself a bit of a double boiler here. This is an old pot that I got at uh, like a thrift store. And then this is just a can of black beans. Um, whatever works for you. Um, inside, I've just got a bunch of... I don't know if you can see in there here. I'll just show you. This is a bunch of old candles. I don't know if you can see them up there. No, no, no out of focus. Um, these are kind of like emergency candle thingies. Um, I don't use paraffin very much. I, I make my own beeswax candles, but I don't. I'm not a big fan of paraffin, except for how it helps things burn in in the context of a fire starter. So. You can buy this stuff anywhere, uh, paraffin. I just happen to be fairly thrifty in my approach to things, and so I found mine uh, just lying around the house for over years of accumulation, uh, just old candles, all right? So that's what I'm gonna use today. Uh, you can use whatever you want in terms of old candles, or you can purchase paraffin, although it's not as cheap as I would like to think it is. So anyways, that's what I'm gonna do here. I've got this this um, black bean can kind of filled with them. And uh, I don't know how much is gonna be exactly perfect. We'll, uh, we'll work through this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take one of my cotton pads and I'm gonna put it in the wax right here in the uh, bean jar. Now the wax is really, really hot. And so it's gonna have a different reaction than if it were almost solidified where it'll, it'll this pad will take a lot of wax when it's almost so, uh, solid but when it's really liquidy and watery it's gonna drip off of this like water so what I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna put it in when it's really warm I'm gonna use my old pliers here I'm just gonna dip it in okay and I got some old uh, enameled plates here that I'm gonna put put these in. I have a feeling it's going to stick to them. So that's just another little inconvenience. I might have to uh, uh, scrape them off or something. So I'm going to do three of them. So here's number two. And again, this is just regular old candle wax paraffin. Oh, that one's not very pretty. Oh boy. All right. So it's a little tiny bit messy. It's nice to have a shop to do this in instead of your kitchen. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, there's three and they're really thin. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab about seven or eight of these, or whatever, five or six anyway, together and uh, see if they react any differently later on when we test. All right, I'm gonna put them in here. We're gonna wait for all this to dry really well. So yeah, as I say, they are a bit messy and um, 
By the way, I just put them in for, you saw how long, just a few seconds each. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is make them, uh, make one out of this strip here. Now, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this exactly. I'm gonna dip a bit in. I don't know if I can burn my hands. Uh, let's try something here. I have a stick. I'll put the stick in. And I'm gonna pull it through while my stick is. There we go, that kind of worked. All right, so this is still kind of dripping, but I think it's kind of done now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna wind this up. I'm gonna wrap it up. Not super tight, but. So right now, this the wax is not hot or wet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wrap it up. It's, it's been coated with wax once. I'm just gonna roll it up and then I'm going to pop it back in to coat it with uh, one or two kind of uh, last final coats of, of wax to hold it all together so it doesn't unwind. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like. And I'm gonna put that in the tray here. I'm gonna do one more. And I'm gonna use the same technique. I've got a, a stick here, and I'm just gonna put put you know the, the paper in and then put the stick on top of it to keep it in while I pull it through the wax. So I'm gonna do part of it there just to get it started. So by the way, as you can tell, it's not like it's super difficult to do this, but it is a process. You gotta kind of enjoy doing DIY stuff and you gotta have the time to do it. Otherwise, it might be easier to just spend money on ready-made stuff, but um, I kinda like making my own things and I kinda get a thrill sometimes of making something that is as good or better than store-bought at uh, almost no cost. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is one last thing. Uh, I've showed you how to do just dipping this into paraffin wax and then I've done one that's a lot thicker than this just to see how long it lasts when we do our experiments. And then I've done strips of newspaper like this about two feet long and uh, you, you dip it into wax and then you kind of um, roll it up like this and then you kind of give it a final coating on the outside just to kind of seal everything in so it doesn't unravel right away. And that's kind of what it looks like. It's about as big around as my <clears throat> middle finger. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give a shot of this lamp oil citronella in here. Um, I don't know if it'll do any good, um, and, and there's different types of lamp oils as well, but I just came across it and I thought, well, that, that seems like, you know, it's supposed to do something. I got it sitting around here uh, I've had it for a few years. I've got the tiki lamps out in my yard. So I think it's probably, I'm just going to do a couple, like a, a teaspoon or two. Um, I, I guess maybe a, what is it, probably a 10 to 1 ratio now of wax to that. Whoa, something, it just solidified in there. Um, don't know if that'll even work, but I'm going to do this anyway. I'm going to do this again with, uh, I think I'm going to do a thicker one. So I'm gonna give this three of these like we did earlier. So I'm just gonna dip this right into that mixture. And by the way, when I put that lamp oil in, uh, it kind of sort of formed a, a semi-solid cloud in there, which I just kind of broke up with this. So yeah, it's kind of a mess. Okay, so it, and, <laughs> What I'm going to do, I have one, one of these things left, so I'm going to pop this in into this new mixture and uh, kind of see, see if it burns longer when we do our uh, experiment. Okay. 
Okay, so what I have here then is a bunch of these hard discs now. They're hard, obviously, infused with wax. And I've got a couple of these rolls of newsprint wrapped up with paraffin wax infused. And then I have another one here that has uh, paraffin, the wax, same wax, except it's got some um, citronella oil mixed in. Probably not gonna make any difference, but I just had it sitting around. Okay, so now we're gonna do our burn experiment to see which one of these styles of what I've got going on here will last longer. Okay, so I'm just outside of my shed now because when you start your fire starters at your campsite, it'll be a little bit more of this environment. There's some breezes blowing and it's it's kind of rainy and miserable right now. And um, so we'll, we'll kind of do our experiment here where it, it kind of makes sense. And, you know, I, I just laugh all the time because, you know, when you watch outdoor videos, everybody, everybody uses these things, right? You gotta use these, this is cool, right? Well, okay, that's fine, but really guys, we, we kind of live in the 21st century. Let's just use the technology that's available to us now, all right? So I'm gonna use a little propane starter and uh, or a lighter, and we're gonna see which one of these lasts the longest. All right, so I'm using this old junky cinder block here for our experiment. Over here, I have just the plain old uh, wax infused um, cotton pad. This is the same thing, except it's got like, I think six pads here or so. And then this is the plain old wrapped up newspaper strip with just the paraffin, the melted wax. And this one is the same thing, except it has the citronella oil um, mixed into it. So let's see which one of these lasts longest. Okay, we're at the three minute mark right now. Okay, so we've got some wind, windy conditions here. So things are really blowing hard. And we're at the four minute mark right now. And uh, things are still holding up pretty well. The, the strips of uh, newsprint are really giving off their wax. Whereas I think the pads are pretty much using the wax as fuel more than it is spilling it around. But all of them are doing quite well in terms of holding up to the wind and the damp conditions. Okay, so we're almost at the five and a half minute mark now, so not much has changed for over a minute and a half now. There's wax spilling from the newsprint rolls, as I mentioned before, and uh, but still, everything's been going quite nice and in the strong wind as well. All right, so we just hit the eight and a half minute mark, and as you can see, way over here, this one has just gone out. This was the thinnest pad, uh, single pad with just the paraffin wax. All right, so we just hit 9.15, and this one on the far right, which is really the, uh, the one that I thought might go a little bit longer with the citronella oil, it just expired. And so we've got two of them still going. And of course, this one's almost gone. If you flip it over, it might do a bit more. And this one, of course, is the five or six pads just in the in the wax itself. So obviously, it would go longer. It just has more wax in it and more stuff to burn. Okay, so now we've hit the 11 and a half minute mark just in about two seconds. So this one has just about run out. This is the, the newsprint one. 11 and a half minutes. And this guy... Just keeps on going. If I flip it over like that, it'll probably go on for another 10 minutes. And of course, in the interest of being thorough, I'm gonna let this guy go as long as it wants to go until it runs out. And I will tell you exactly how long it lasted. Oh, and it just, just expired and it hit 1727. So almost 17 and a half minutes for the thick cotton pad fire starter to run out and have no more flames. 
All right, guys, so we just saw how long various different DIY homemade fire starters will last. They last pretty long. Now, why do you even need a fire starter? I mean, if you have enough tinder and kindling to do a good job making a fire, all you need is a match. You don't need a fire starter. Well, that, that may be true, but sometimes you might not have the perfect tinder and kindling. You might just have a few sticks from the forest floor uh, that maybe are not as small as you would like. Maybe there's a bit of dampness or something. And, and that's why you need a fire starter because it can maintain a fairly decent flame for a long period of time. I typically, honestly, I just use a, a, a lighter, a hand lighter, a cigarette lighter, and it does the job just fine. I probably wouldn't need more than a few minutes under most circumstances, even if it was not ideal, if I had to get some wet sticks or something. But these guys last like close to 10 minutes and a lot of them, depending, you just make them a little bit bigger with a little bit more wax and it'll last you 15 minutes or more, right? So that's a pretty good deal. All right, guys, I said that if you were to wait to the end of this video, I was gonna reveal to you an aha moment. All right, that might have been, you know, overselling it a bit, but it is something you might wanna know. I love DIY, I've been doing it for my whole life. Uh, and when it comes to fire starters, I think it's a, a great thing to do. It's a fun project and uh, it can save money. Although, you know, we're not talking about a lot of money any way you cut it, right? I was out at Lowe's the other day and I stumbled across this. Now, it doesn't really matter what the name brand is. It's a brick, as you can see, and it has 48 fire starter cubes in it. Each cube looks like kind of like this. Okay, it uh, looks like a, a small piece of dessert or something like that. It's about an inch or an inch and a, by an inch and a little bit square, and it's, it's pretty thin. This thing, I've, I've already done my experiments, so in case you're wondering, I can tell you exactly how long it lasts. It lasts 14 minutes and 58 seconds. So 15 minutes probably lasted long. If I would have flipped it over a couple times, it probably would have lasted a couple minutes longer. So. If you go online, you can see other videos that talk about DIY fire starters. A lot of them will say they're not effective, the store-bought ones, or they're too expensive. I'm telling you guys, they are not ineffective. They work very well and they're not expensive. This whole brick of 48 of them cost me $6.50 Canadian, which is, honestly, it's around four bucks, maybe 4.25 US. So it's not gonna break the bank and it'll probably, this guy here, <laughs> probably last you an entire lifetime. All right, so DIY is great, I love it, and I hope you guys maybe take advantage of it if you like. Otherwise, just go to Lowe's or Home Depot or online and grab a big brick like this and it'll last you for probably the rest of your life going camping is my guess. Guys, thanks for checking uh, out this video. Please do give me a like and a subscribe if you would like more stuff like this, DIY stuff and, and uh, adventures in the summer as well. We're gonna be doing some really neat trips this year. Thank you again for joining me and please guys, you know what I'm gonna say, right? Get out there, enjoy God's creation and always keep on looking up.